And the IRS has this 20 point checklist for classifying a worker as an independent contractor versus an employee. If you answer yes to the first five questions, you're probably dealing with an independent contractor. If you answer yes to any of the remaining questions, the worker is likely an employee. Still, some employees are misclassified, and while it may not always be intentional, the savings in labor costs give a major competitive edge to those who do it, especially in the construction industry. As you drive through Michiana, it's easy to see. Things are pretty good in the construction industry right now. There are new developments around every corner. But in recent years, contractors like Tim Larson of LaPorte-based Larson Danielson Construction noticed something seemed off in some of the bids they were seeing. We found other contractors bidding at prices. We couldn't quite perceive how they were getting there because we knew how much they were spending on material. And we figured they had to be uh, spending a lot less on labor than we were. That's because some contractors are believed to be participating in worker misclassification. On the IRS 20-point checklist, there are some key questions that will tell an employer if a worker is an employee or an independent contractor. Like, do you set the worker's hours? Do you provide the worker with tools, equipment, or materials? Do you instruct the workers about when, where, and how to work? If you answer yes to any of these, the worker is an employee. By now, you may be wondering, why do all the misclassifications keep happening? Well, some suspect it's because independent contractors receive a 1099 instead of the W-2. That means employers don't have to pay workers' comp insurance, unemployment insurance, or state, local, or federal taxes. Mike Stavitsky is the director of the Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio Regional Council on Carpenters. He says those savings allow contractors who misclassify to bid on projects at a much lower rate. An easy 30 percent right off the top. It's kind of a race to the bottom. It drives the whole industry on a downhill spiral. That's making it extremely difficult for contractors like Tim Larson who are following the laws. What if we did this? You know, why are they doing it? What if we did it? And, and the figures I came up with just for our business were startling. Tim found out if Larson Danielson spent a year misclassifying its workers, the company would save big time. Here's how. By not paying Social Security, Medicare, and federal unemployment taxes, the company would save $800,000. In Indiana unemployment taxes, he would save $200,000. Workers' compensation, that's another $164,000. Since independent contractors take care of their own taxes, that would save Larson Danielson $1.4 million in taxes to the federal government, $332,000 to the state, and $112,000 to local cities and counties for a grand total of $3,008,000. That's just our company, and there's hundreds of contractors in the state. Tim even testified in front of the state legislature with those numbers. A 2010 study financed by the Indiana Building and Trades and Construction Council estimated Indiana could be losing up to $400 million annually in tax revenue due to misclassification. It's a problem on the federal level, too. Last week, the U.S. Department of Labor ordered Indianapolis-based TWG Construction to pay $82,477 in owed wages to 20 misclassified employees. Investigators found TWG had subcontracted with a temporary staffing company that misclassified workers, failing to pay them required wages under federal law. TWG happens to be working on some big local projects, too, including the Ivy at Berlin Place Apartments at Four Winds Field. The level of enforcement is, is directly correlated with how much people comply with the law. If it's not going to be enforced, they're not going to comply. These people are supposed to be paying payroll taxes on a whole number of people, and it's just not happening. Democratic Senator Karen Talian, who represents the Ogden Dunes area of northwest Indiana, is one of several lawmakers who have tried to take on this issue in the state legislature. It was a hard task to bring up the other legislators to the point where, oh yeah, Maybe there really is a problem. She eventually introduced Senate Bill 305 in January of last year that would have established a payroll fraud task force among the Department of Labor, Department of Workforce Development, Department of Revenue, and the Workers' Compensation Board. My last proposal was to um, 
get all of these agencies on board to agree to hire one sort of special investigator. That bill had one committee hearing, never making it to a vote. During this current legislative session, Democratic Senator David Nizgotsky of South Bend is taking a slightly different approach. His bill would simply require the four main agencies to report on worker misclassification each year. I'm just looking for a reporting so after three years we can amass that information and we truly can determine what is the extent of uh, employee misclassification in the state of Indiana. They need to do something about it now because, like I said, it, the potential is there. This could be a, a huge problem in the future if it's allowed to continue. If you believe you are being misclassified, you can file an anonymous complaint with the Department of Labor. We've posted how you can do that inside this story at ABC57.com. As for the current Senate bill, it has cleared the Senate and now moves on to the House, where Republican Representative Michael Karakoff of Kokomo has authored an almost identical bill. The hope is the two bills can be married together into one, and it will also pass the House. Live in the studio tonight, Drew Gardner, ABC 57 News.